Today we're going to be working on another card for my carousel card holder. So this is number three and we're going to go with a Halloween theme because it is October and Halloween can be fun. And I recently purchased this set of stamps from uh, Tuesday mornings and they are the Tattered Angels stamps. This particular set any Halloween set you have would be uh, more than fine. Alright, it says it's Vintage Seasons Halloween Hauntings. So, if you want to look for that online someplace, here is the code for that. And you can check out some areas, maybe on eBay or whatever, if this is no longer a current run. This has some great stamps that can be used. I definitely want to use this pumpkin one. Now I don't know if I want to use it for the whole entire card or maybe put it in the corner and chop some off. But I think initially I will make the entire pumpkin shape and then I can trim it if I need to. The spider web's kind of neat. I think I'll go with that. I was originally thinking of using the tree. Um, I might still do that. So I will probably uh, stamp each of these three images and then use them if I want to and then store them away if I don't. I need to get a piece of cardstock. Alright, I'm just going to be using some of the Solid Decor Great White Smooth Texture Coordinations cardstock that I got from somewhere. It might have been Michael's. Sorry about the crinkling. So I'm going to get a piece of that. And what I'm going to do with this is use my black embossing powder so that I can get a nice raised texture. So I need my embossing ink. And my dogs are roaming around today so you're going to hear their toenails. So sorry about that. All right, this block is not quite big enough for the whole pumpkin. All right, this this is a tray for note paper, but it's acrylic, so we're gonna use it. All right, so let's get our stamp. I'll just slap it down on there. Ink this up really good. You get a piece of scrap paper. And you really want to make sure you've got good coverage with your embossing ink so that when you stamp it, all the uh, parts of your image come off nicely. And we're just going to stick it down here at the bottom. Give it a nice good press to make sure everything's transferring over well. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to want to sprinkle the embossing powder on before that has a chance to dry. Got some chunks in there. I'm going to give it a shake. All right, so there's my little pumpkin. Now there's a little bit of specks within the pumpkin itself um, that aren't part of the stamp, but I don't mind them being there because they're going to give it more of a little bit of a, a distressed look once it's being uh, heated up. 
All right. Put that on there so I don't have an accident. And let's get this uh, cooked up here. All right. Now, when you're videoing this, it's really hard to show when it's, you know, done its thing. See this right here? This part is not done yet. So the rest of it's shiny, and that, that still needs to be cooked. All right. And now that part is done, too. So I'm going to go on and finish stamping my other uh, images I need to do, and I will be back. All right. So we have all three images done. And... They look really good. Feel awesome. I don't need to do any coloring to the tree or the spider web, but I do need to do something with the pumpkin. So I'm going to use some distress ink. I have Rusty Hinge and the new color for this month, Carved Pumpkin. So we're just going to use the Carved Pumpkin first because it's the lighter one. And I also have some iCads here. <clears throat> that I can uh, use some color on as I'm working and that way I can start adding them to that uh, book that I started. <coughs> Zoom you in a little bit for this. So we're going to... That's a little too close, isn't it? We're going to primarily do the lighter color towards the center. But because it doesn't really matter where you're going with it, you can uh, spread it around everywhere. And then when you come back in with the other color, it's going to cover up what you know what you really didn't intend to do. So I want it nice and orangey there in the center where the main orange is supposed to be. Like that. And I do think I need some green. I don't know if I have a green. Let me look. Yeah, we have some peeled paint. That might work. I'm going to use the peeled paint in the leaf area. Alright, so switching over now to the rusty hinge, which is just a little bit darker kind of an orange. And we're just going to come in from the edges on that. Now the nice thing about stamping your images on paper like this is you can be as messy as you want and when you come back through to cut it out, no one's going to notice. Alright, that looks like it could probably still use a bit more darkening up. So I'm going to grab one of my brown kind of colors. See how tea dye works. Alright, one complaint. These distress tools are only attached by a staple and some crappy adhesive. And that doesn't stay on very well. They need to be glued on with something super good. Now, of course, if you don't want to use distress inks or if you don't have them, you can use markers and, you know, if you're a good Copic artist, go in with your Copics and do some nice coloring with that. You can watercolor these. You could paint them with acrylic paints, you know, whatever, whatever medium you enjoy the most. I just thought it would be nice to use the distress inks because I have that new color. There we go. I think that's doing what I was wanting. Just a little bit darker around the edge there. All right. Now I need to add that bit of green. And this is peeled paint. Now we're just going to get it on that stem there and get it down here in these leaves.
All right, that'll look really good when we cut that out. So I'm going to cut these out, and then I will be back. All right, we're back. I think I must have lost my mind since I decided I would actually fussy cut this tree out. Oh my, seriously. I had to have lost my mind. Okay, so I can set that to the side for a minute. And there's my pumpkin. Now we need to decorate the card itself. Let me zoom out just a little bit here. Now I thought it would be good to do kind of an ombre of the gray and the black on here to make it more like a spooky nighttime thing. And we probably won't go full on black, do more of a blendy black. So I have my, uh, my palette here. And I'm just using um, Fine Touch Acrylic from, who puts this out? Hobby Lobby. Alright, so I got my black and my gray. Now I need a brush that's not disgusting. Alrighty. So we're going to go with the gray first. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add some masking tape to the edge. And I see I have my huge tape. I don't know where my skinny tape ran off to. Let's see if I have it in my drawer here. I do. Good job. Alright, so let's see. Where? Put it on that. I think I like having a little border on the edge. That's why I'm doing this. So we're going to get some put it along the edge here, kind of like that. So there we go. Just going to slather this on here every which way. And we're going to want the light part to be at the bottom as if maybe the sun finally went down. So I come back in with the black and make a nice dark transition area here. Kind of get that blendy look going on for that. This might take a little bit of effort to come up with just the right shades of gray you're going for. I think I kind of like that. Come in with this black up here at the top and just kind of define the darkest part more. And there's my loving dog. He's been driving me up the wall today. In and out and in and out and in and out. Alright, I think I like that. So we're going to let this um, I made a boo boo. Don't touch it if you like it, because then you have to come back in and do it again. Alright. I'm going to let that dry and deal with the dog, and I'll be back. Alright, now we are dry. So let's peel this tape up and see if we accomplished what we were trying to do. It's tearing the paper a little bit. That's annoying. I wonder if we can heat tool it and got, get that to let go better. Alright, so we got that 
on there. Now we need to see how our elements look. And that looks kind of cool, I think. Something like that, maybe. But I also have this black fabric I showed you earlier. Let me get a chunk of that off. I've got to find the corner. I don't like starting in the middle, even though it is not going to be used for anything else, more than likely. Just in case you want a big piece. Maybe down here at the bottom somehow. Pumpkin. Sit on that. You know what else would look kind of cool? A moon. Yeah, I think a chunk there at the bottom would look good. So let's chop off a bit of that. see what I have for a moon. I know I don't have a moon stamp. I do have these two punches though. I think the bigger one would be nice. Let's see what we can come up with. That's a good size. Now I don't want it to just be boring white paper. So I'll set that to the side for a minute. What can I use on here to make it fun? All right, I have Champagne Ice from Deco Art Metallic Luster. And I also have Black Shimmer. So let's just smear some of this on the page. coming by making it extra spooky all right so I got that finished up let's see how that looks it's kind of neat I made a second one for my little iCAD so does that look good on there I don't know I feel like maybe it needs something else all right I've looked through my stuff and I found one of my um, was it ginger peach color of the Women Art silks, and I'll just do a little test here on this area. And it looks like it might be pretty cool. Just kind of a you know harvest moon look to it, rather than being just straight up. Um, champagne color technically. So let's do that on there. I like that. Change that to the little one too. I need to let those dry before we can add them to the thing and then we'll be back. Now we're back to the adhering section. I had moved stuff around. I was originally had the idea of putting this moon over here, but I had it up underneath the tree, and I think that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to put that over in this corner. First of all, I want to get this bloppy thing down here, and I think the best way that that's going to be done is by putting a nice glob of gel medium down here. that perhaps and just kind of 
squashing that in there because it doesn't need to be completely attached at all parts but attached enough that it will stay on because it's you know three-dimensional now this is going to go here and my tree is going to go there but the moon's going down before the tree so we need to glue that first Okay, I'm just kind of patting the uh, gel medium onto the back of this tree because it's a very awkward shape to try and scrape glue onto because of all of its little bits and pieces. Alright, so we want that like that. the gel medium all over the front of the tree so I'll just kind of use this baby wipe to gently press it down and wipe the excess away at the same time Now, if I don't get every little tiny piece stuck, that's okay, because it helps it add some three dimension to the, the little card. I'm going to be very careful with the wiping, because the uh, little tree parts are very delicate. I don't want to rip them off. Alright, now for our pumpkin. All right, and I'm using the, the gel medium on this too instead of just, you know, glue or something because uh, since the object it's going to sit on is three-dimensional, we don't want it to not stick. And the gel medium is really good for getting that on there like that because it does better with the lumpy products, I guess you could say. pretty good. Now we need something on here, maybe in that little area over there. I have my Halloween stuff. I'm going to peek in here and all these things and see if there's anything that can go. I've got this little banner. And it might be a little too cutesy since it's not really cutesy anyway. I'm just digging through my stuff to see what I have. Oh, here's some... Here's a rub-on. What's this one? Chills and thrills. Frightful. How would that look? Chills and... Th you know what? That would look pretty cool. I think I'm going to go with that. This is a rub-on. I don't remember what company. It might be close to my heart. Okay, the and portion is just jacked up, so we're going to get rid of that all together. And then I can write it in myself. So, chills there. Thrills. Maybe right there. Alright. Now I need a rubber tool. And I know I have a bunch, but, and they're right in front of me. There we go. Actually, 
Actually, I think I might be able to find an and symbol in one of my alphabet collections that would make it work. The only obnoxious thing about these is you really got to make sure you've gotten all the little bits rubbed down before you peel up the plastic. But if you do it nice enough and keep it keep it in place, you can always set it back down and rub some more and make sure you're not skipping a piece. All right. Chills. Thrills. Let me go grab an alphabet letter that would be cool. And this set. I had another set that was kind of neat, but the and symbol on it was way too big. So this is Thicker's brand. And it is the Amy Tangerine style. So we're just going to see where this little and can go. I don't want it like super obvious looking. That'll work right there. And that way I know where I need to rub down the thrills word. And we want thrills all the way on the gray. It doesn't matter that it's in the tree a little bit. All right. Okay, chills and thrills. Now I'm going to get my stickles. That one might be fun. That one might be fun. That one might be fun. And there's black. Well, we got black, so let's not do that one. We have cinnamon. Platinum might look really nice. I think orange peel would be really good. We got that pop of orange there from the, the pumpkin. And then this way we can bring that up into the title. I'm just tapping it to make sure that the uh, stickles goes to the front rather than a bubble. And we're just going to squish this on the letter here. Let's see, I'm zooming a little bit so you can see what I'm up to. Maybe. All right. Just decorating the stickle letter, or thicker letter with the stickles. Now you want to make sure you get a really decent coating in there because once the gel dries it's just going to leave you the impression of the glitter and it might look gappy if you haven't done a thorough application. So there we go. And there we have it. Chills and thrills. I think that and symbol looks really cool with that glitter on there. So this is obviously going to take a little while to dry because we still have some wet gel medium down here. And I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, this process for my carousel card number three. And here's some close up. Thanks for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button down there on the right. Like and share. And as always, feel free to comment. You can find me on my other social media by looking for the links in the description box below. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.